Alright guys, today we are going to be talking by request about Winkler knives and by request I threw out a poll on the community page which if you guys aren't participating in on my channel make sure you do because it is a great place to engage and it really helps shape the uh, content that we create on this channel. So anyways, without further ado, that on, I ran a poll and people, I was asking them what they wanted to see for a bushcrafting and field knife and what was the next one they would rather see. I talked about Bussy or Busey, however you want to say that. I threw out TRC and I threw out Winkler and Winkler overwhelmingly won in a landslide. So rather begrudgingly, I did pick up a Winkler and also I think it's worth noting, I've been wanting to pick one up for a little while now because it seems like on almost every one of my you know like rank videos and where I talk about you know different outdoor and field knives you know people ask you know where are where's the representation for Winkler knives and it seems like there are quite a few of my um, followers or subscribers and that really enjoy Winkler knives so I thought might as well at some point have to pick up a Winkler. Now, I've been, like I said, begrudgingly kind of wanting to pick up a Winkler, and I want to do this video and really explain, not just talk about this particular Winkler, but in Winkler knives as a whole, and why I was so apprehensive to actually getting a Winkler knife. And so that is what this video is truthfully about. So, <clears throat> This right here is a Winkler belt knife, if I remember correctly. Let me double check. Sorry, this is a Winkler Blue Ridge Hunter. And this guy is very similar to their bell knives, but it's just a little bit smaller, I wanna say, but still a very manageable size. And this is one of their newer knives in ADCR V2. It also has, in my opinion, probably one of my favorite handle configurations from them, and that is the sculpted walnut handle. So I think not only is it very comfortable, but I, I have to be honest, it is a pretty attractive looking handle, as you guys can probably see there. This is a legitimate just walnut handle and it's left raw and like just uncoated or coated but not like you know any type of um, treatment really to it so it's very raw it feels like a raw piece of wood when you're holding it so invariably it is pretty cool and I think that is definitely Winkler's style however like I said this is um, a Pretty cool handle and one of my favorites, though I do like their rubber handles as well because they are super tacky. They don't look as cool, but they are very, very grippy and very practical. So that is what I have here for you guys to see. And now let's talk about why I don't like Winkler knives. So first off, I have to say the Winkler, in my opinion, is very similar to half-face blades, but a little bit worse. And what I mean by this is that as I've said in the past about Winkler knives, I don't have any problem with um, or sorry, not Winkler, but half face blades. I don't have any problem with their blades. They're, they're well made, they're made in the US, they use decent materials. I will say I especially like the Kydex slash leather sheaths that Winkler does. I think these are actually really cool, but for the most part, the thing that I have an issue or the largest issue with Winkler knives is that you, when you purchase one of these knives, you are primarily paying for brand. And so you're primarily paying to have a Winkler knife over others. And a really good example of this is that if you go to, especially considering the materials here, if you go to uh, Terra Silica or something like that, I'm totally butchering it, but it's a Finnish website. They have the Yakari Puko and the Yakari Puko uses AD CRV2, the same exact steel as this. And you can get one of those knives, even with a sheath, for well under $100. So you can get a knife that it arguably isn't going to have the same cool leather Kydex sheath, it's not gonna have cool walnut handles, but functionally speaking, like actually using it in the field is probably going to perform just as well as this knife and you can get it for under $100. And for reference, one of these brand new and full disclosure, I paid a lot less for this because I got it pre-owned so I did not pay brand new pricing. But if you were to go on to say a place like Blade HQ and buy this brand new, you would be looking at about $360, especially because like I said, this is the walnut handled version. So the walnut handled version is a little bit more expensive but um, <clears throat> like I said, I did not pay that and I would not pay retail for a Winkler, just putting that out there as my own personal opinion. Um, I don't believe that these are worth $360. In fact, I paid about $270 for it and even that, I don't really feel this knife is worth. Now, like I said, uh, 
everyone's going to have their own opinion on pricing. And I'm sure that there are going to be people in the comment section below ripping me up saying that, you know, this is absolutely worth 270 or 360 for this, 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 and this reason. Once again, I personally do not believe this is because there are options, like I said, like the Yakari Buko that you can get that have the same exact steel, probably just about the same exact heat treat that are going to offer you the same level of performance for under a hundred dollars. So that's my one of my largest problems with this knife. And to bring another competitive offering in, and once again, you guys probably know, I am a bit of a fanboy for Bark River Knives, but this truthfully is a case where this is what you guys are looking at here is a Bark River Knives Bushcrafter, and this is a knife that typically when in stock they are kind of tricky to come by similar to Winkler knives I will say um, these are a little bit tricky to come by but when you find these in stock will go for about $260 and when you look at this this is a CPM 3V once again Bark River Knives Bushcrafter talking about the same size knife here the BRK Bushcrafter is actually slightly bigger if you guys can see that um, but this is a you know little bit bigger knife but uses CPM 3V has a thicker um, stock uh, thickness on it so it's a little bit more robust of course uses a different grind but <clears throat> in my opinion this is a superior knife at a cheaper cost and so once again factoring you know retail new retail price you can get this for about $260 whereas this Winkler costs about $360. So for $100 more, you are getting a cooler handle and once again, a cooler sheath, in my opinion. Though I will say, functionally speaking, this leather sheath from Bark River Knives is perfectly adequate, like it has more than enough retention. Um, it's just fine. It doesn't look as cool, but once again, completely functional. So when you look at it, we have a knife that is about $100 cheaper and about or about $100 cheaper and uses a vastly, vastly superior steel in my opinion. And not even so much my opinion, but just in facts. I mean, CPM 3B, when we look at this, is a tool steel that is powdered metal and it absolutely will destroy most other steels. Like this is a type of steel that genuinely, even with this type of grind, you could use, and granted there will be slight edge damage, but with minimal edge damage, you could use this knife to cut through steel chain. Like this will cut through nails. This will cut through steel. Like this it will actually cut through steel with minimal damage. ADCRV2 would be, you would make it probably, but you would definitely see some noticeable damage. So once again, you know, when you look at it, you're paying a lot of brand name for Winkler knives. And I don't necessarily think that that's the worst thing because you still are getting a good product here. But at the end of the day, it's, in my opinion, once again, there are vastly superior options out there, whether you want to go with a more premium option, something like a Bark River Knives Bushcrafter, or whether you want to just go with something that has similar materials to this and go with something like the Yakari Puko that has rubber handles and ADCRV2 for blade steel. So there are competitive options that vastly outweigh and vastly outperform this knife. And so once again, that's similar to what I've brought up with Half Face blades because half face blades makes things like the um, disaster junior that's about the same size as this uses the same steel as this but still this knife here the Barker River Knives Bushcrafter is a hundred dollars cheaper so in my opinion you know there's just not really a lot of reason to go for a Winkler um, unless you're specifically wanting the Winkler like brand name experience or you know like you love the ergonomics <clears throat> and rounding this conversation out with ergonomics. So that's probably the, the other reason I really haven't gotten on board with Winkler and haven't really like jumped at these knives is personally, and once again, this is all preference. You might actually find Winklers to fit your hand really well. But for me, I've actually really disliked the ergonomics of Winkler knives. And once again, you see with a lot of these newer or more contemporary um, knife makers, especially in the survival field, uh, they make very, very thin handles and if you're going for like a concealable knife, something that you can you know keep close to your body, having thin handles is great. I've talked about the SE3 
a lot in that same regard because I like the SE3 because it's a thin piece of blade stock and very thin handles. But for the most part, if you're actually using a knife outdoors, you want a thicker handle. So you guys can see here, vastly different um, handle thicknesses here. The Bush Crafter on the right here, or sorry, yeah, on the, you guys is right, is very thick, very plump, and uses a Coke bottle shape. However, when you hold this Coke bottle shape, it feels hand filling. And I'm here to tell you guys, once again, not to sound like a you know complete fanboy for Bark River, but they do a good job and have some of the best ergonomics in the business. Like I have not personally held a Bark River Knives knife that has not felt very comfortable to me. Like the ergonomics are squared away. They always fit my hand very well, whether it's a Bravo 1, Bravo 1.5, a Bush Crafter, um, an Aurora, anything that I've ever held from them, whether it's a large knife or a small knife has always felt good. And so once again, when you see like another knife company like this going with very thin, very tactical handles, this is good for concealability, but very poor for actual field use. And now to be fair, I have not used this in the field yet. I literally just acquired it. But at the same time too, if you guys have been around the channel, you know that I have reviewed, purchased, owned well over a hundred outdoor bushcrafting survival knives from things like SE Hunglises to Tom Brown trackers to once again, more Bark River knives, more um, half-face blades. I've owned the whole gambit, both expensive and cheap, Mora knives, you know, Gerber knives, like I've owned the whole gambit of knives. There's not many brands that I haven't like, you know, owned at least at one time or another. So when I say this stuff, I'm not just like talking out my butt here. This is really like, I, I probably know what I'm talking about because I have used a lot of knives and I have owned a ton of knives. So once again, I'm not saying that I don't have to use a knife, but realistically barring any catastrophic failures, I can pretty much tell you if the knife's gonna be a winner or not just by holding it. And once again, I don't think this is a horrible knife, but for me, I, this would not be a top line. Like this would not be a front line knife for me and so I think that's also not gonna lie why you see a lot of these come up on the used market and that's how once again I acquired mine pre-owned so to be fair I did not you know like pay full price for it wouldn't pay full price for it and I think a lot of people end up buying these knives because of Winkler's name um, and then end up getting them and being disappointed and sell them. So in my opinion, that is what I think about Winkler specifically. And I know that this is probably not gonna be the message that a lot of people want to hear. But once again, there's been a strong reason. Like if there is a company that I don't already own like their knife, or if I haven't already experienced it, um, there's probably a really solid reason for that. And some of them like Fjell Raven, or Fjell Raven, Falkneven, um, I really do love Falkneven knives. It just took me a while to get one. And even companies like TRC, I have actually already owned TRC knives, but I would totally own like an Apocalypse. Um, I would totally take a TRC knife. Um, Bussy or Busey is another company that I would totally um, own a knife from. It's just kind of tricky to get your hands on Busey knives. So there's a few companies out there that I do genuinely like. I just haven't really had the chance to have like a TRC Apocalypse or like a Busey Game Warden. Um, but here in due time, I will likely acquire both of them just because they are really solid knives. But yeah, so when it comes down to it, like I said, I bought this knife primarily because I wanted to actually have like an on-screen example to show you guys and explain why I don't like these knives. But um, my overall impressions of Winkler is that these are just very expensive, very overhyped knives. I think they're very much like Montana Knife Company. I think they're very much like um, half-face blades where they're decent knives, they're made in the US, they're made out of decent materials, but there are much, much better competitive offerings that already exist that will do the same thing for literally a third of the cost. So and that's my opinion. Take it or leave it, like it or not, that's what I think and that's my experience. So anyways, guys, hopefully you enjoyed the video. As always, God bless and I'm out.